For those of you that don't know me, my name is Eric McMillan, uh, Chief Security Architect for the McMillan Group. And what we're doing this morning is discussing security and privacy. Some of the common topics uh, that come up when I speak to accounting firms, banks, uh, other groups are social networking security, insider threats, security awareness education or the lack thereof, encryption, insider threats, and yes it's on there twice for a reason because right now it's probably the biggest issue that we are facing uh, with the down economy. Social engineering and legal compliance. Well, first thing we'll talk about is social networking, seeing how this seems to be the biggest thing. I've been to three conferences in the past three months, and it seems like every other session is how Twitter, Facebook, plug in your favorite social network here, is going to revolutionize everything we do. I use social networking, but I'm here to throw a little rain on the fire. Social networking sites are a target-rich environment. As a penetration tester, I love them. It makes my job very easy. Unfortunately, most people, when they join, I'll pick on Facebook since it's the most popular right now. When they join Facebook and you send them a friend request, what's the first thing they do? Sure, I want to have lots of friends, whether they know you or not. We uh, did a social engineering engagement for a bank. Hmm, okay. Let's build a dummy Facebook profile of the bank president. Go out to the website, there's a nice picture of him, plug it in. And then we sent friend requests to all the board members, all the loan officers. Well, what's the first thing they did? Oh, hell yeah, it's the president. Better join him. And then we sent them a nice link. Oh, you ought to check out this file. They installed the malware for us, case closed. It took us all of about two hours. Very good realization on that job, by the way. <laughs> Traditional web client attacks. These are doing exploits against the browser. All these Facebook applications, there is nobody vetting that code. So it is very easy to stick a little JavaScript in there. You use the latest you know, iHeart or send a drink application, well, yeah, you can do that. And that little JavaScript goes out and pulls down a piece of malware off another site and plants it in your browser. What we need to do is, one, address the business value of social networking. There is business value there. And then we make that decision, are we going to allow it? Yes or no? And then if so, at what level? We need to have those protocols and procedures in place as opposed to just saying no, no, no. We need to sit there and say yes, but with these caveats. Teach them what they're supposed to do. What about the, uh, the benefits or usage of firms setting up Facebook type sites? Uh, a lot of firms, uh, you know, a lot of other clients are using Facebook uh, extensively for college recruiting. That's very good there, setting up an actual firm page, but they're generally then restricting it to one or two people that can actually post information and, you know, actually put a editorial controls in place for what is going out on that site. One of the other things that you may want to talk to your business owners on is uh, Hootsuite, which is the application Gary talked about yesterday uh, in his presentation for Twitter, is you can set up, you know, where you s constantly look for certain keywords. Have somebody set that up and look for your firm name or partner's names, because that way if something comes up mentioning that, you'll be alerted and see that information. So, you know, could be good, a client raving about the great service they got, could be bad, staff accountant, bad-mouthing a managing partner or something like that. But again, you want to follow that information so you can be proactive in addressing it and not having it bubble up to the managing partner two weeks later or something.